to those who have accidentally ended someone's life. What went wrong? This was a hockey accident when I was 19. I'm 36 now. I shot a low slap shot and there was a net battle, and my friend on the other team got shoved, fell over, and the puck hit him in his temple and shattered much of the structure. He died later because of the bone fragments in his brain. I stopped playing for a long time after that. Now I play men's league and wear his number. Story 2. My best friend and I were unable to do anything for another friend of ours who fell on a climbing trip. We were desperate to help her, but there really wasn't much anyone could have done so far in the back country. We couldn't wake her up or move her safely, so we just kind of sat there. Eventually, a helicopter came, but she was already brain dead by the time they got her to a hospital. It's been a few years since, and I ended up going to med school as a result. So now I know nothing could have been done, but I still feel uncomfortable about it, though. Story 3. A crazy wasted guy broke into my house several years ago. He had a knife and was threatening me. My young son and I were the only ones home. I heard noise in my house and grabbed a baseball bat I keep under my bed and went to investigate thinking it's probably nothing. The guy came at me yelling incoherently, and almost as a reflex I cracked on top of his head with the bat. I think my adrenaline must have put more into the strike than I thought, and the guy dropped immediately. I called 911 and police arrived quickly, but he was already gone. Crushed skull. I have nightmares fairly often, but can't picture how else it would have ended without me and possibly my son being attacked. Survival instincts are strong. I feel like a lot of people have a similar thing to the bat under the bed. Just something available just in case. I feel like 95 plus percent of people will never have to use it. OP, I'm really sorry you did. Because it's not an easy thing to do. But at the end of the day, you protected yourself and your family. That doesn't make it easier though. Wishing you the best. You were put in a very rough situation. Story 4. My uncle, back in the 1970s, was coming home from work one night in a snowstorm. He turned onto his road. His house was on the other side of a hill. He climbed the hill, and as he started descending the other side, he heard kids screaming and yelling. Brakes were useless. He ran over a ten-year-old kid who was sledding down the hill in the middle of the road and ended his life. It was his next-door neighbor. There were no charges against him, nobody sued him, because it was clear it was a freak accident. Even the kid's parents told him it wasn't his fault. However, my uncle, 53 years old, a World War II USMC combat veteran of the Pacific War, clear-headed and not a drinker, drank himself to death in less than a year. Tragic all the way around. Story 5. I'm in the medical field. I know it doesn't technically count, but failing to save someone due to lack of experience, inadequate reaction time, or even your choice of medication can really feel like you did it. I clearly remember the first patient under my care who died unexpectedly. I ordered the standard care medication for him and even joked around with him on the way out the door. Two hours later, I was in his room as part of the cardiac arrest team. He didn't make it. There were signs. Signs somebody more experienced than me at the time might have picked up on. Signs that would have told me that for this particular patient, standard care care wouldn't be enough. As an older colleague says, it gets easier to deal with the death over time, but the day it stops affecting you, you should stop practicing medicine. Story 6. I used to be a combat medic in the army during the war in Iraq. I served with the infantry, so I saw a lot of stuff in the 10 years I was working. I'll tell you the same exact thing I used to tell some young privates fresh out of the AIT. If you didn't help this guy, what do you think would have happened? They would have died anyway, but at least you stepped up. And you're going to step up again and again because that's what we do. I'm lucky because even though I have pretty good empathy, I also approach everything with an analytical mindset. That's probably why I haven't developed PTSD. And it's also the reason I never took the loss of someone I was working on too hard. You can't win everyone. And doing something and screwing up is better than doing nothing at all. Which is what the alternative in most situations almost always is. And if you learn from that screw up, then the next hundred guys you kneel down next to will be that much better off. Story 7. I was maybe 16 and planted a huge vegetable garden in our backyard. My grandma came over and I was super excited to show her since she absolutely loved plants and gardening. She comes over and started pulling weeds in my garden. One was especially hard to pull out and she fell backwards and hit her head on a paver stone. Had a brain bleed and was in a care home not knowing who anyone was and unable to walk or move her hands for the rest of her life. I technically didn't end her life, but I think the outcome was worse than death. OP to be... Very specific, you didn't end her life, and you also didn't cause this outcome either. An absolute freak accident. Could have happened at any time to anyone, really. Just a really unlucky string of events that happened to happen at that time, in that place, in that way. But I promise you, it wasn't your fault. Story 8. It wasn't me. 
It was my dad a few years before I was born. He was a truck driver, and one late night while he was doing his normal drive between Sydney and Brisbane, a car coming in the opposite direction failed to make a turn. The driver was close to his destination, and had likely decided to continue driving despite being tired. My dad had nearly 80 tons worth of truck going 100 kilometers an hour. He couldn't do anything. The car went under the front of his truck. The driver and his passenger were ended immediately. The passenger's three children in the back were pinned but alive and awake and screaming. Being the early 90s, my dad had to run for the nearest house to get help. When he reached a farmhouse, he got them to call emergency. He couldn't bring himself to return to the scene of the accident. The screaming was already haunting him. From that point on, my dad couldn't handle the sound of children crying. It broke my family. The actions of one idiot who didn't take a frickin' nap. My dad still had to drive that route several times a week. I remember watching him grip the steering wheel so tight every time he approached that corner. Don't drive tired. Story 9. Not me, but my stepdad about two weeks ago hit and ended someone's life on the road. For context, he is an overnight truck driver for a local company. The person he hit was attempting to end their own life via highway, and my stepdad was the unlucky person to do the deed. It was about 3 a.m. and raining, so visibility was low. The guy was also wearing full black besides blue shoes. I ended up seeing his dash cam POV and, boy, it was rough. You really couldn't see the fact that he hit a human afterwards. Stuff happens, though, and it really messed him up for a while and still messes with his work. He wasn't able to drive on the highway for a bit. Story 10. We just turned left at an intersection when the car in front of me wanted to turn right into a convenience store parking lot. The problem was, a truck was blocking the entranceway due to the snow, so he came to a sudden stop and I rear-ended him. It was an older gentleman with his wife. They both seemed fine and were raging at the truck who took off. I ended up being charged for following too close. About a month and a half later, I get a letter saying the guy's estate is suing me for causing his death. I sent it to my insurance company who settled the case. I wasn't allowed to see any of the case files. From what people told me, he was a smoker, so he wasn't in the best of health already. I'm still not sure how to feel about the whole thing. I kind of wish it had gone to trial so I could have closure one way or the other. Story 11. I haven't, but I thought I did for almost two years. Very close friend of mine. The kind of guy that always seemed to be happy and everybody just loved him. Was hanging out at his place. We were 16 back then. And for whatever reason I don't remember, I showed him how to tie the hangman's knot. Three days later, he was dead. His mom called, claiming he hung himself and it was all my fault. Screwed me up badly. My friend was dead. I never saw anything coming and apparently it was my fault. Almost two years later, we found out by coincidence, he ended his own life with exhaust fumes in his mom's car. I'll never know why he did it, which still haunts me sometimes, or why his mom blamed me with wrong accusations. Never could be angry about that, though, given how painful that must have been for her, or how she knew about that stupid knot. Story 12. Someone was illegally passing on a double solid yellow. I hit them at highway speed in my semi. I was hauling a lot of cargo, so I didn't dare risk flopping my rig by swerving. Ended the lives of a mum and her three kids. Nothing much I could do about it. Took a few days off and was back at it the following week. Edit for those asking. What I was hauling was Sour Condi, a petroleum product in layman's terms. It's a byproduct of the separation process. You heat oil and thin it out and separate it up into different storage tanks. It's far more complicated than I'm making it out to be. This specific product was 75% sour condensate. Imagine jet fuel, but also incredibly poisonous. This stuff was around 750,000 parts per million H2S gas. Anything over 500 parts per million, depending on your personal health, can end your life. Story 13. So I'm kind of on the other side of this. In 2021, a woman coming home from the casino at midnight turned into the wrong lane of the highway and hit my best friend. It was head-on at 80 miles per hour. Ended his life instantly. She then lied to the cops and told them that he was the one driving in the wrong lane. He was a very straight edge dude, so this was confusing. We wondered if he had been drugged, touched a table with Fent on it or something. His poor mom couldn't understand why he would be in the wrong lane. Finally, a state investigator gets involved. Checked the black boxes of both vehicles. The investigator determined that my buddy had let off the accelerator, but still accelerated three miles per hour after this. The particular road he was driving on was downhill, so they caught her in her lie. The only explanation for his acceleration was that he was indeed in the correct lane. She eventually came clean. Unfortunately, this crap small-town police department had already ruled this in my friend's fault somehow. The woman committed insurance fraud to the tune of 200,000 and left the country. There is finally some justice being done and the trial is ongoing, but 
but it's been an exhausting, horrible ordeal. I miss him all the time. It's so hard to make male friends as an adult. We were 28 when he lost his life. I joke with my wife all the time I had put all my eggs into that basket, expecting him to still be around when we're old. I'll breathe easier when this piece of garbage is behind bars or has her license stripped from her. Story 14. Not me, but my father-in-law. He was at home with his girlfriend when a young guy, high on something, broke into their place through a window. While his girlfriend called the cops, my father-in-law held him and pinned him down until the police arrived. The intruder ended up dying from a combination of the drugs and a few other factors. Father-in-law was charged with murder, but the charges were all eventually dropped. It messed him up for life. He never got over the guilt and ended up passing away from an overdose himself a decade later, leaving six young kids behind. Story 15. I had a good friend die at my house years back. He had taken Subutex or Suboxone unbeknownst to me. I was tired and needed to go to bed. He wanted me to hang out, so I smoked some cigarettes with him and we drove to the quick stop for a beer. Hung out a little longer and he looked like he was trashed. So I put him in my sleeping girlfriend's, my roommate, bed, and put on season 3 of House MD and said goodnight. He ended up overdosing and died in his sleep. Sent a good number of the friend group down dark paths after that, myself included. It's getting better for me now, at least. And several others are sober, finally. Always felt like he was wanting to hang out longer so I could keep him alive. Story 16. It turned out a new co-worker lived in the same apartment complex as me across town. She had just moved to the area a few weeks back. We actually ended up going to Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows Part 1 midnight screening together. She was a really passionate fan. It was great. Her car was in the shop suddenly one day, so I told her at work about a shortcut she could take home on her bike. She took the shortcut and was hit by a drunk driver crossing the other road. She was 26. Guy was going 75 in a 35 trying to show off his souped up sports car. Sorry for the shortcut, Angie. Story 17. It wasn't me, but my sister was out for dinner with her partner on a Friday celebrating her new job as a newly qualified occupational therapist. He actually proposed to her that night, so they were celebrating that. It was the first day of snow on a December day, and for some reason he was doing 70 in a 40. Hit a puddle and spun off the road. The car flipped and my sister was knocked unconscious. The police were there after five minutes, but obviously they aren't trained to do what ambulances and firefighters do. The ambulance took 15 minutes to get to them, and she had died before they arrived. It's been three years and three months since it happened, and I think of her every day. I'm also furious of how he put my sister in danger like that, but I know, he lives with the regret of what he did. Story 18. I lost my first girlfriend a few years ago when she took her own life. I don't wholly blame myself for it anymore, but I still feel responsible. I still think I could have done more. I failed to be there for her when she needed me most. As a result, the way I view and manage relationships has changed. It's made me more openly expressive in how I feel towards friends, but I don't allow myself to have deeper relationships than that. I don't think I ended her life, but my inability to see the signs and the lack of maturity did. Story 19. My uncle got a new golf cart just to drive around town. My aunt was test driving with her niece. My cousin, uncle's daughter, as passenger. She accidentally bumped the front wheel on a curb. The cart flipped, spilling out her niece, which resulted in the golf cart landing on her head. My aunt wasn't the same for several years after. My entire family showed her so much support and love and reassured her we knew it was an accident. What made the entire thing worse for her was the court completely annihilated my aunt. They went after her in every single avenue they could. Reckless driving, suspended license, revocation of nursing licenses, top fines they could give. It's a wonder she didn't receive jail time. To the judge, my entire family and all my friends made personal statements about how wonderful this woman is. It was an accident. We forgive her. You're making the healing process worse on everyone. Nope, they didn't care. I'm wondering who was pressing charges here, because... To my knowledge, in a case like this, the state wouldn't press charges, right? I, unless I'm totally mistaken about that, and I think I must be, because it sounds like no one in the family pressed charges. Either way, though, a horrible situation made all the more worse by the legal system. A freak accident ruining more lives than it has to, in my opinion. Maybe you see it differently, and hey, that's fair enough. Loss of a life is not an easy thing to navigate, let alone when you bring the law into it. Story 20. Let me just say, if you're homeless or lost, never ever, ever sleep in a dumpster in an industrial park, no matter how cold it is outside. Find a doorway or something. These things usually get emptied very early in the morning when no one else is around. 
The driver will not hear you scream over the revving diesel engine as the fork lifts the dumpster into the bin. The driver will not hear you scream when the compactor starts as the diesel engine is still revving to actuate the hydraulics. Not until the mechanism gets jammed and he has to step out to see what the problem is. Then he finds you half in and half out of the hopper, which is what caused the jam. Unfortunately, it also pretty much just cut you in half. Story 21. You could argue that I didn't end her life, but I still feel like my mom's passing was, in part, my fault. I knew she was significantly unwell, and I knew it was odd that I couldn't hear her snoring. I shouldn't have put off checking on her until the morning. Sure, I can't prove that checking on her in the night would have saved her. Maybe it was already too late by then, but that doesn't mean it was okay for me not to check. Story 22. Not me, but my mother-in-law. She was driving at night down a country lane with my father-in-law in the passenger seat and my husband, nine years old at the time, in the back seat. She was coming to a bend when another car heading the opposite way rounded the corner in the wrong lane and hit her head on. The driver had been trying to overtake on a blind bend at around 70 miles per hour. His life was ended almost instantly. My father-in-law and husband escaped with cuts and bruises, but my mother-in-law was left permanently disabled. She still feels really guilty about it even though it wasn't her fault. Story 23. My mother, technically. She was being moved to hospice due to a month-long struggle with melanoma that spread through her body. They gave her medication at the hospital to ease her pain during the transfer, but before they did, she asked me if I would be at her side and continue to push her medication button every four hours. We shared a few more words as she ate a raspberry yogurt, and that was the last I spoke to her. Over the next few days, I sat next to her and pressed the button as she asked. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. To know if I stopped for a day, she would wake up and I'd get to talk to her again, but she would be in pain. Story 24. 1. My cousin ran over someone and instantly ended the person's life. It was a case of drunk driving. He was depressed for a while, but the sinister part of that is the powers that be got involved and charges were dropped. I thought that was purely unfair for the other party, regardless of if they were paid off or not. To this day, I look at my cousin in another way. 2. Another cousin of mine was, on the other hand, a victim of drunk driving. He was the passenger and passed instantly, just like the victim above. It's taken years to get a sentence for the friend. He relocated and now has a family. He wants a reduced or no sentence at all because of his children. No idea if this will be granted. I wouldn't consider drunk driving accidentally taking someone's life. There is a level of intent when it comes to making a decision like that that I think can't be overlooked. The way I see it, it is willfully endangering other people on the road, let alone yourself. And although your decision making is impaired, I think at some point before you get in that car and turn it on and go, you should be able to stop yourself. And if you can't, perhaps you shouldn't drink so much. It's a pet peeve of mine, so maybe I'm harsher on it than I should be, but I also have a feeling a lot of people will agree with me. Story 25. I don't tell this story often because I stopped blaming myself. My friend Katie died when we were 19 in an accident later at night. She was the kind of person who never drank, never did drugs, and generally just was a great person. She ran a red light and got T-boned and died. I texted her that night and it was right around the time the accident happened. All I could think was, oh my god, she got distracted by my my text. This was about 15 years ago now. I blamed myself for a long time, but I know it wasn't my fault. If it was the reason, she still should have waited to check her phone. I'll never know why she ran that light or what happened, but she lives on with those of us who knew her. Story 26. I accidentally ended the life of my husband's grandfather. My husband and I had been married for about two weeks when his beloved elderly grandfather was hospitalized after a stroke. My husband was devastated. We went to the hospital together to see him, and my husband's entire extended family was there, like 25 people. I was brand new to the family and had not met many of them, and had only met his grandfather once. It was kind of awkward being there as the only non-blood family member during such an emotional time. I decided to just stay quiet and out of the way. The family all gathered around the grandfather's hospital bed. He was definitely alive, but was hooked up to a bunch of stuff, and had been unconscious since the stroke. It was unclear if he would ever wake up. The family decided that they would go around the circle and each person would say something to the grandfather. Things like, I remember what a great dad you were, or thank you for teaching me what it means to be a good man. Really deep, heartfelt things, to which the old man had zero response at all. I was standing in the circle next to my husband and assumed they would skip over me, but it became clear that they expected me to say something, which was terrible, because I didn't really have any knowledge of or history with the family beyond my husband. My mind was racing, trying to figure out something to say that was appropriate. Then I remembered Rocky. The one time I'd met the man, like three weeks earlier, I'd spent the whole 20 minutes we were there talking to the grandfather about his new Jack Russell Terrier, Rocky. He was so excited about Rocky, 
and really seemed to take a shine to me because I, wanting to make a good impression, was more than willing to ooh and ah and ask questions and listen to stories about him. Aha, uh -huh, I thought, standing there by his hospital bed surrounded by his entire sobbing family. I'll mention Rocky. That will be both personal and safe. What could go wrong? So, Daddy Earl, I said, this is so-and-so. I met you recently and was so lucky to get to play with Rocky. And I just want you to know we're taking great care of him and he's very happy and we're gonna make sure he has a great life. So don't worry, okay? And bam, Daddy Earl frickin' sat straight up in his bed, opened his eyes, grabbed his chest, made some sort of garbling noise really loud, and then fell down dead. Just like something that was extremely not alive anymore. So that's right, I ended Daddy Earl's life. The machine next to him went beep, and all 25 of my brand new in-laws looked at me in absolute horror, especially the ones who hadn't gotten to say anything yet. Talk about uncomfortable. It was obvious to me and to my husband, thank God, that I hadn't ended his grandfather, but released him. Clearly, he was hanging around waiting for someone to confirm that Rocky was okay, so he could go on and shuffle off this mortal coil and get on with things. And I was the only one who was both kind enough and rude enough to do that for him. Oh, I'm telling you, holidays after that were, uh, mighty awkward. And some of them never forgave me. That's okay, though. When things got tense, I would just excuse myself and me and Rocky would go for a walk. Story 27. I worked in HR years and years back in the Navy. We were prepping for our deployment and making sure all records were updated. A guy came in and updated his record. Turns out he'd been divorced for a couple of years and then remarried to another military member, but never reported any of it. He had been drawing dependent basic allowance for housing, BAH, the entire time. Now, for enlisted sailors below certain grades, BAH isn't automatic. It needs to be approved to be entitled. Him updating his records caused a chain reaction of events and audits that resulted in him owing over $40,000 in overpayments of BAH. The thing about the military pay is if you owe money, they screw you royally, as in they take your pay right away. He had $0 paychecks. I was in the process of helping him with a waiver to get the debt forgiven. I guess it was too much stress for him. I found out he ended up dying of a heart attack during the process. Sad part is, I had been successful in getting these types of debts waived or reduced to minimal amounts, using justification that the member could have been entitled had they been prompt and up-to-date on their records slash approval. And honestly, it wasn't in the best interest of the military to keep the debt. Worst case scenario he was looking at was maybe just owing the difference between single and dependent BAH, which would have been a small fraction of the 40k. My coworker gave me crap about it afterwards and joked for a while that I gave the dude a heart attack. Didn't find it funny and thought it was way too soon. I felt really bad as I was definitely trying to help the guy out. Story 28. In my reckless younger days, I was driving around a friend to make various drug deals. Once, he was poised to buy a batch of speed. The seller was adamant my friend should test the quality in the car, so he did, a pretty small line. After a while, it dawned on us, the seller had mixed up his bags and my friend had snorted a small for speed line of Fent. Luckily, the dealer lived not too far away and had an OD kit at home. This was before Narcan was a thing. I raced over there as safely as I could considering the circumstances. Got a straw with powdered naloxone that I blew up the nose of my friend, and after a while he was recovering and I was so thankful. I didn't even know what I would say to a possible paramedic. There are a lot of really tragic accidents and stuff here, and, well, when it comes down to it, this one, I don't even know who would be at fault for this. I guess the dealer, right, for mixing it up? But whoever it was, OP had literally nothing to do with this. It was definitely fortunate that you're able to save your friend, though. OD kits, Narcan, literal lifesavers. Like, sure, you could always just say, oh, don't take the drugs, but look, things happen. Substance addiction is no joke at all. And so it's great that these things exist. It is kind of nice that we get to end the thread on one where someone didn't lose their life, because, whew, it's been a bit heavy. Anyway, that is the last one for today. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.